Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. So we're just going to give it a few more moments as people start to join us this morning. All right, then. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar this morning. So today we're going to hear more about the Agritech support available at the Midlands Agritech Innovation Hub. So we are joined by experts from Harper Adams University and Agri, who are Agri Epicenter's partners. So in this session, you'll find out about the support available to develop your agri-tech solution to take it from an idea and bring it to reality. The session will signpost you to collaborate and innovate with these companies and partners. We will start with developing the idea, then hear more about the world leading engineering support from Half Adams University, and then finally the growth element and engaging with the end users and farmers from agri Center. So for those of you who don't know AgriEpi Centre, AgriEpi's goals are to enable technological and digital transformation in agriculture. So we aim to achieve industry targets in improving food security and environmental sustainability. And we work with a number of stakeholders such as government, academics, tech developers, retailers, engineers, farmers, to enable agri-tech innovation through trials, asset usage, project management, technical advice, membership, and much more. So you'll be hearing a little bit more from AgriEpi Centre later on, but first of all, I'm delighted to hand over to um, Dr. Trisha Toop, Innovation Manager at Agri. At Agri. She will be talking about agri-tech growth and resources for innovation. So over to you, Dr. Trisha Toop. Thank you very much. Let me just um, share my screen, just one moment. I just want to double check um, that I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you, because um, there's nothing worse than getting through your presentation and realising that it hasn't clicked through. So um, hello. Good morning. My name's um, Trisha Toop and I'm the innovation manager for the Agri project based at Harper Adams University, um, actually based in the Agri Epicentre Midlands Hub. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about support that we can do for developing your idea um, and how you can access our free support. So um, the Agri project is basically a partnership between Harper Adams University and Aston University, and we're part funded by the European Regional Development Fund um, and part funded by the universities to assist in knowledge transfer between the universities two companies. We work in the agri-tech and food and drink production sectors or companies that um, have a technology that isn't actually used in those sectors but would like to spin in. We help um, small to medium sized companies in the Shropshire, Telford and Rekin um, areas at the moment but we're hoping to expand that soon. Um, with, although we're focused on SMEs, we do also um, liaise and interact with larger companies as part of the SME supply chain. Um, our current project is running until um, August 2022, but we do have a number of funding bids in at the moment um, with government um, to follow on this important work. So how does it work and um, how can you sort of interact with us? So we have an initial stage, which is called an innovation review, which is sort of 12 to 20 hours of knowledge transfer support. And that can cover um, anything that you need as a small to medium sized company um, in the agri-tech or agri-food sector. So that can be scoping or feasibility studies. We do a lot of nutritional calculations and um, back of pack and legislative um, compliance with companies, um, focus groups, market analysis, 
um, recipe development or in the tech side, sort of new product development and prototyping. Um, innovation support then follows on from an innovation review. So if you've come to our sort of 12 to 20 hours of support and we feel that um, we can help you further and you need a little bit more support, we can then do um, 12 days of um, free um, knowledge transfer and further work. So some of that can be actually after we've done the scoping to develop a prototype. So we've done everything from sort of uh, wiring up Arduinos, doing the programming and actually getting functioning prototypes to um, demonstrate um, a concept. We can do more in-depth research. We can do um, implementation of scoping activity. We do in-field um, testing and, and actually including some students into the projects. So you do also have a pipeline of younger people coming through that know the technology and that can come and work um, with your company. And there is potential for longer term collaboration, but I'm not gonna speak about that now because I'll talk to you about that at the end after I've gone through a few case studies and hopefully then Palmjit will pick that up later on um, in his talk. So how can we help on your development and your sort of how your progress from idea generate, uh, generation through to your commercialization of your product? So um, we have companies come to us um, throughout um, this process at different um, areas along it. Um, Generally, they've already come up with an idea, but if it is a company that's wanting to spin into the agri-tech or agri-food market, then um, it might be that they've got um, an idea to come into the sector, but they actually don't know how their product would fit and align to that sector. So we can actually sit down and discuss that and look at the problems that their particular idea would solve. Um, we can do uh, marking scoping, what makes the most sense in that agri-tech or agri-food market, what is the niche? Where is the problem that that will solve? That's quite useful for companies because that can help with further development. Um, we quite often have companies come to us with two or three really good ideas and we can help them um, determine which is the best to take forward first um, and what to wait to take to market. Um, we can help you speak to real potential users of your product. What do they really need and want? And this is really important in the agricultural sector. Um, farmers are um, particularly um, uh, interested in things that can, can help them with their bottom line. And sometimes technology providers um, don't necessarily understand what they actually need. Um, and speaking to sort of um, real people, real farmers in that section is really, really important. We can help with prototyping and make your concept a real thing um, and help with some of the problems that come with um, prototyping when you've got an idea, but actually it can be um, a little bit more problematic to make happen than you'd hope. Uh, business analysis, what's your plan to make this happen? Is it realistic? Does it need changing for the sectors you're going into? And then product development from prototype to production ready. So we can help a little bit with design for manufacture, sustainable design, um, how to make your product as net, net um, zero carbon and also commercialization. What do you need to do next to help launch to your chosen market? So we've picked up um, three case studies um, on companies that we've helped in this area. I'm going to do them at a very high level. I won't go into very much detail at all. And this is um, completely uh, a decision that we've made because obviously we don't want to give away any secrets from the company. Um, I've given you links to the websites where they exist and all images used in the presentation have actually been taken from their website and um, all the companies have had visibility of what we're going to present today. So um, Magro is a company um, that has um, a proprietary technology that significantly reduces the waste associated with pesticide applications. We're based in the Midlands hub for innovation, space and support. And we helped them in the Agri project to assist in the development of a communication platform. So they had lots of different trials going on across the world. And what they wanted to do is have um, all of the data they needed fed back in a concise um, and um, method that the research scientists could then um, analyze quickly. Um, so what we did is we looked at different software platforms and we assessed those um, by a process engineering specialist in the Agri project. Um, 
and we did a report on which ones would be better. It needs to be a fairly low cost solution because they had quite a lot of different stakeholders. Um, um, we helped to inform their decision on which platform to use so that they could go forward and liaise with stakeholders and get the information they needed in a form that was usable. Um, I've put a link on the bottom to their website, um, which I'm sure Annabelle will be making the slide pack available at some point. So Earth Rover, now this um, is a company uh, using robotics to help vegetable and salad farmers reduce resilience on chemical sprays and also to um, pick their um, products more effectively so they could sell more and waste less of what they grow. Um, they're also based in the Midlands Innovation Hub space um, for um, their office functions and also innovation functions. We assisted them in the Agri project by doing some um, market scoping for different um, opportunities for the technology. They knew the agricultural space really quite well um, and they had some solutions to some really pertinent problems in that, but they wanted to see whether or not um, there would be any further way that they could expand their market base um, and capitalize on the amazing tech that they've developed. So we utilize specialist support combining both agriculture and engineering, engineering specialists within Harper Adams. Um, and we uh, created a report which they used to inform product development and some of their placement. And I've um, popped uh, their website link in there. And then Bird and Bell. Now, this one is um, one that's particularly close to our heart because a very, very early stage startup company um, run by current and past Harper Adams University students. And they were developing products in the alternative protein food sector, um, which I think a lot of people are quite squeamish about until you've actually tried them. Um, so they were really interested in sort of um, um, high protein, um, low carbohydrate, low calorie um, products and um, things like the cricket flour, as you can see on the top of the screen and mealworms um, do actually give this and um, uh, if any, if you have tried them before, they really don't taste how you'd expect them to. So um, in the Agri project, we help them scope market trends. It's a really, really growth area. Um, um, I identify target areas. We also did some trial production in the Harper Adams University Development Kitchen. Um, had some very, very nice um, carrot cake made with cricket flour. Um, and also we helped link to possible UK suppliers so that they could um, reduce the carbon footprint of their supply chain as much, much as possible. Um, AgriAppy have also been absolutely key to helping them sort of move forward. Um, and they've registered at the Midlands Hub for their incubation space. They've had discussions with um, experts at the AgriAppy Centre with regards to requirements for a commercial production area on site. Um, and they're really benefit, benefiting from the industry links in the AgriAppy Centre. So um, really good um, company. They haven't got a website yet because they're super new, but watch this space. I'm sure they'll be um, along shortly and you will remember them from this presentation, hopefully. Um, so the support for companies based in the Midlands Hub, um, basically, as I've said, we can do an awful lot of things. Um, we can help you really with um, quite a lot of what you'd need. Um, what I haven't mentioned in our case studies, which, but which is very close to my heart because I am a sustainability expert as well, is we can help you um, with your trend towards zero waste, um, net zero carbon and your sustainability um, initiatives. So we can really help develop those along with the more tech-based um, prototype um, and development of that type. So what next? The support doesn't have to stop here. We've got this um, lovely package of free support that we can help you on your way. But once that's um, finished, we can actually um, help you to link in and work with experts at, in the Harper Adams University specialist departments. And that can be engineering, which Palmjit's going to tell you about. We have food innovation, business agricultural, veterinary and animal welfare specialists. And we can help you identify the best person to work with. And with them, we can help you put in funding bids um, linked in with the Agri Epicenter and Harper. That's gonna be a really strong consortia. And we can also then get you more industry and practical academic links going forward. So 
Thank you very much for listening to me. Um, as I said, I'm Tricia, I'm the Innovation Manager. Um, Rose can't be on the call today, but she's our Business Development Manager and would be probably the first person um, that you'd come into contact with. And I'm sure Annabelle will um, put this online, but you will be able to access these links. So um, any questions or you'd just like a chat to see if we can help you, please get in touch. Thank you very, very much, Tricia. That was great. And remember, questions will be taken at the end. So if you've got any questions for Tricia, please submit them as we go through. So now we're going to move across to um, Panjit Chima, who is Head of Engineering Department at Harper Adams University. And we're gonna hear about the world leading engineering support that you can also access at the Midlands. Thank you very much, uh, Annabelle. Uh, thank you, Tricia. Um, just going to share my slides with you. Hopefully you can see those now. Yeah, I just make them into full screen. Yeah, I'll just do that. That should do it. Okay, hello, uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Palm Chima, and I'm the head of the engineering department at Harper Adams University. So just very quickly, a, a quick overview of who we are and where we are. So we're based in uh, just north of Newport, uh, just a couple of miles in a, a village called Edgemond. Uh, we're set in a 600 uh, plus acre hectares of uh, uh, rural land. So it, we're a farm as well as an education establishment, as well as uh, an agri-tech hub as well. Uh, we have somewhere in the region of about 4,000 students uh, studying a whole range of programs, uh, not just engineering, but uh, we have students studying food technology, veterinary health sciences, uh, agriculture, environment, land, agribusiness. Um, and we are looking at supporting businesses of all types, whether they be uh, small incubators, you know, startups, uh, scale ups, to well established uh, multinationals. Uh, we worked with uh, quite a range of them through a number of sort of funded uh, initiatives. And uh, um, I'll explain a, a bit more how you can engage with Harper Adams uh, through my presentation. So that's where we are. We are occupying uh, a fair bit of land, but uh, we do like to think of ourselves as a test bed. So that we have uh, opportunity to use some of the, uh, uh, the grounds that we are located in um, for testing of new product services and solutions. So engineering support, well, I have a team of academics, uh, technical staff, uh, teaching and researchers, um, and they have a vast um, uh, amount of experience uh, spanning many, many different sectors. Uh, certainly farming and agriculture uh, plays a big role, but we have uh, academics with material specialism, uh, specialist in autonomous systems, uh, drones, UAVs, um, and vehicles. We have others with uh, a speciality in uh, off-highway, uh, and then robots and mechatronics play a big role in what we do, and I'll talk about one or two of the projects a little later. Uh, in terms of student numbers, uh, we have a number of engineering programs, both at undergraduate and postgraduate level, as well as master, uh, 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 master's and uh, PhD. Um, and uh, we have perhaps uh, a total of about 300 uh, or so students, 250 to about 300 students studying a range of programs. In terms of some of the facilities, and there's another slide which I'll go through, uh, we have an engineering design center that was uh, part funded by uh, JCB. So with state-of-the-art computing facilities there um, with industry standard software, uh, everything from CAD to advanced uh, uh, CFD analysis and FEMA. Um, as well as uh, uh, some of the facilities, which is on the next slide, we do have machines as well. So we're uh, quite looking in as much we have a range of uh, uh, agricultural machines, uh, not just agriculture, but also uh, on highway machines, uh, vehicles, um, as well as autonomous robots and uh, uh, drones. And uh, there's a, a, a couple of examples about drones a little later. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the off-highway track uh, 
uh, in uh, another slide. But these are the sort of solutions that we are beginning to offer, which sometimes um, gets overlooked uh, because uh, you may not necessarily relate some of those to an engineering department. But, you know, we've done a lot of work in precision agriculture, precision farming. Robotic harvesting has been one of the big areas. So we've developed uh, solutions uh, for strawberry picking and laser weeding. Um, we've also done a lot of work in controlled traffic farming. In fact, we have a, a 10 year study looking at the effects of controlled tra uh, control traffic farming and different types of sort of tillage systems. And this is uh, widely referenced and uh, researched. We do an awful lot with vision systems um, when you're making robots and uh, autonomous vehicles. Um, vision plays a big part of that technology. So uh, looking at RGB cameras, LIDARs, laser systems uh, form a, uh, a part of our offering and expertise. And also sensors, uh, um, a range of different types of sensors, whether it's uh, measuring uh, temperature of a soil, nutrient levels, or uh, airspeed, or even uh, sensors to navigate your machine around the place. Uh, we uh, look at communications and connectivity in a big way. Um, we also do a lot in terms of envir environmental monitoring. And uh, like I uh, said earlier, um, heavily involved in looking at the application of drones for agriculture and farming, um, especially spray drones. And uh, we are working with the HSC and CRD to look at uh, the use of agri-spray drones for farming and agriculture, uh, which is not permissible at the moment uh, because they fall under the aerospray spray uh, category. But this is an area we're conducting a number of drift studies to show the efficacy of using uh, precision drones to spray crops uh, uh, or um, uh, certainly to uh, uh, identify uh, areas that require treatment and only spray areas that need the treatment. So those are some of the solutions that we offer. Uh, and I'll just go on to one other aspect that we do have that sometimes gets overlooked is that uh, we have access to uh, an off-highway test track as well. So this is uh, for testing a range of machines and robot systems in what is a real-life environment. So we can test whether it's a, a robot or a, an off-highway vehicle or even indeed a, a, an armoured personnel carrier in what could be quite a, a challenging uh, course. Uh, so we have a range of terrains with uh, wet mud, ruts and water crossings, as well as inclines, and we can uh, really put a machine through its paces as well. So this is a, about a, a, a kilometer long track near um, uh, the engineering uh, uh, research facility. So some of the other facilities that I alluded to, we have the Advanced uh, Engineering Innovation Center, which is looking at the sort of technological advances that sort of looking at uh, artificial intelligence and machine vision systems, that's on the top left. Um, we have the uh, engineering design center with about 200 high spec PCs. You can see uh, a Volvo XC90, uh, I think that is, uh, going through some of our uh, uh, off highway track. We also have an under cover field. So this is a 30 meter by 60 meter field. Um, completely covered uh, so that we can perform uh, a range of tests uh, with machines um, in, in a controlled environment. Um, we also have a, a, a range of uh, uh, other facilities which you would expect in a university, so sort of teaching facilities, classrooms, seminar rooms, laboratories, lecture theatres with uh, the ability to bring in machines, so you can see uh, a, a roller door there. Moving on, um, I'm going to talk about a big resource that we have within the university, and especially in terms of engineering, is, is our students and uh, access to our students. And we always welcome working with industry that have new and innovative projects. So, you know, if there is a, a project that you have uh, or an idea that you want to sort of test drive in some way, then 
perhaps students are a way of engaging with the university and with us to explore some of those ideas. And, uh, and I'll explain one project a little later, which is drive with a student coming up with an idea for a, a spray system and uh, getting on board a major company. Uh, but part of our programs is uh, the students uh, um, in their undergraduate year three spend a year in industry. So this is 12 months uh, embedded in a company as an employee. And this is a mandatory element of the teaching at Harper Adams University. And you can just see on the map, you know, the sort of companies where they're located uh, up and down the UK and indeed across the globe. So uh, there's quite a profile of students uh, uh, seeking employment and being offered employment. So if there's an opportunity that you can find students can help and support you in some way, then, you know, do let us know. The sort of companies that they end up going to work for, um, this is part of the placement. And indeed, uh, upon graduation, uh, I've just listed a few, this is a, a, a growing list of companies, but it span all sort of engineering areas. So it's not just simply restricted to agriculture and farming, uh, they do play a large part, but you know, you will see logos such as DSTL and Bentley, as well as, you know, Vauxhall cars as well. It just shows some of the uh, places the students go to. So one of the projects uh, that I was going to talk a little bit about is the ability to sort of uh, have a test bed, a, a living test bed. And the hands-free farm is exactly that. So this is a project where uh, over the last two or three years, we have grown crops using just machines. So uh, it goes through the entire life cycle of uh, uh, planting a seed in a field, to tending to it, and then subsequently harvesting the crop, just using machines. And we welcome industry partners in this. So, uh, you know, uh, industry have provided us with machines, but we have supported other industry to develop their machines and indeed looking at sensor systems and safety systems. So um, there's a, a, at this present moment, a 35 hectare um, uh, farmland that we have with uh, a number of different crops in there and sometimes there are uh, opportunities for industry to come along and place some of their products in there and see how they would operate and perform in a real life environment in a controlled real life environment so we all welcome the opportunity for businesses to work with us on this project so if you have a uh, product systems or solutions um, then you know do let us know we have 35 hectares of land at this moment available that can be used as a, a test bed and that's just some of those sort of machines we have tested on there we've taken a, a traditional combine harvester a sampo combine harvester removed the driver and replaced it with a, a robot we've done the same with a, uh, a, a tractor We've adapted uh, drones and drone systems so that they can not only monitor the performance of a crop to identify pests and diseases, but they can also take samples. So if we have a truly hands-free farm, uh, then we don't want the farmer going into the field in any way, then we have developed drone systems that can take samples of crops. Uh, we have scouting vehicles that can take sample, uh, soil samples, etc. So those are the sort of solutions that have been tested on behalf of industry, as well as some of those machines that we have developed uh, within the department too. Okay, and this is perhaps one of the, the latest projects. So this was in conjunction with McConnell's um, and a student. And the idea was to see if we could develop a intelligent AI based spot sprayer. So uh, the application of spray uh, chemicals is uh, uh, can be quite a, a, a sort of a difficult process, uh, labor intensive. Uh, we developed a, an AI system that would recognize dock leaves in this case. So we trained over 5000 images of dock leaves in various shapes and sizes um, and then uh, set a, a neural network to identify those. Um, uh, so there's a, a camera that would scan what's in front and then a, a control spray system that will just spray the dock leaves, leaving everything else behind it. I'm gonna try and run this very quickly if I possibly can. Um, so you can see it, hopefully you can see the video. And this was developed 
Um, so funded by the department. So I funded uh, the hardware the components. Uh, the RoboCut was loaned to us by McConnell's and the students spent uh, approximately nine months developing this with the support of technicians and academics uh, to develop something that is potentially a world first here. So that is the sort of projects that we can get involved with and sort of the, the expertise that we have at Harpa. Thank you for listening. If you uh, left my contact details there, if you have any sort of uh, queries, then uh, please do get in touch. Over to you, Annabelle. Thank you very, very much, Parmjit. Great to see such a range of technologies being developed and in line with students. So that's really positive. So we are now going to go across to um, the Director of Business Development, Lisa Williams at Agri Epicentre, and also the Hub Operations Manager, Les Herdis, who will talk about Agri Epicentre and the innovate, inspire, inform elements of growing the business. So over to you both. Great, thank you, Annabelle. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Fabulous. Hello, everybody. It's great to present to you this morning and to showcase the excellent facilities that um, are at our Midlands hub. I kind of see us as the, the third corner of a triangle and you've already heard of the excellent support services uh, from Trish and her team within the Agri project and also the excellent world-class academic expertise from Palm Jit and, and his team as well. And throughout the next couple of slides, both Les and I are just going to present the facility that we have um, based on the Harper Adams uh, campus through our innovation hub, but also just to showcase as well what we have on a, on a national level. Um, so very quickly, for those of you that don't know AgriEpi, we are funded and supported by a base uh, through Innovate UK. And there are four ag tech centres within the UK. AgriEpi, we focus on engineering, precision and innovation. And there are three other ag tech centres, including Agrometrics, focusing on big data, CHAP on crop health and CL, focusing on livestock. Now, we do work across all, all centres. So we do have some joint projects, but we're all established as individual businesses and, and organizations as well. Um, but just, if, if you do have any questions on the other centers, please don't hesitate to, to reach out. Focusing on AgriEpi this morning, our approach is to be that connector, that enabler, the ag tech enabler. And this slide demonstrates the areas that we focus on. So we provide access to leading academic institutions, particularly linked and focused on this uh, showcase today. We work very closely with our colleagues and partners at Harper, really looking how we bring in the different um, leaders from within, within Harper and how we bring in industry uh, supporters, collaborators, well with potential funders and we can provide support through a various number of services that I'll, I'll go through. So we broker collaborations. We can also provide access to R&D funding and help support in terms of um, supporting on bid writing, again bringing collaborators together, accessing funding, providing details to, to our, our members in terms of the funding that's available and then helping them develop that, that collaboration. We have a range of test and, and demonstration sites through our satellite farm network, and, and I will um, come on to that in, in more information. And clearly today we're presenting the, the Midlands Hub, um, and we have a range of incubation facilities across the UK as well. Knowledge exchange and dissemination is a key area, and you've already heard from Trish with regards to the importance of this um, element and how through the support provided through um, the Agri project that can really um, start from the idea generation to scoping to testing and then looking at the, the market and we can also support here uh, in terms of engaging with the 24 uh, satellite farm um, farmers that we have 
as well as engaging through a wide industry network. Focusing on our strategic pillars, what are we here to, to deliver and, and support on? Um, and we are here really providing a collaborative ecosystem that really supports the ag tech businesses, but also driving solutions for the ag sector. How do we do that? We deliver this across four pillars. The first pillar on the, on the left of the slide is membership and the incubation hubs, which is what we're here to talk to you uh, about today. Um, our membership is 192. Um, I've got a slide in terms of, of who, who they are and some you will recognize, but for us, it's about how do we grow this, this network? How do we support that network and support them in a, a range of ways? Clearly, the incubation hubs, the one we're talking about today at Midlands, but we also have one in the north in Edinburgh and also one in the south at Cranfield. And it's all about how do we deliver that support to innovate companies, inform and inspire them. And that's very much working in this support triangle with Agri, Harper and ourselves in, in delivering that. We support uh, with companies in, on the low TRL level, and really that's looking at the Agritech R&D, and we have a range of industry development facilities. Again, Les will showcase what we have at, at Harper, but here we have a, a range of um, portable te technology that, that can help companies develop, um, sorry, portable um, and also fixed assets. So for example, at, at Cranfield, we have um, a phenotyping gantry, we have dairy units um, across the UK, one also at, at Harper focusing on, on welfare. We have a range of sensor developments, data platforms that really help in terms of understanding the impact that technology can have on farm and the impact that it can have throughout the supply chain as well. I've also made reference to our farm network, our farm innovation platform, and these are a range of 24 commercial farmers in the, in the UK. We also have international farms as well, so we have four um, that, I, again, I'll, I'll touch upon, but the, the reason um, for these farms is really to, to look at end user um, engagement, getting the right technology on farm. So it could be, and we've recently taken a, a group of um, technology developers onto a, a fruit picking farm to help them understand the, the challenges on farm, the different terrains, the weather, you know, why farmers can or cannot invest in, in a range of technologies to help them understand the barriers and to help them understand how to develop particular technology. So we can help at that level. Um, but then we can also help in terms of, you know, bringing the collaborators together, the different partners, and also helping access um, funding. But then on the farm innovation platform, it's how do we really demonstrate success? How is that technology working? How is it making an impact? And through the data platform, we're able to actually demonstrate and present the impact that, it, that it's having on those farms. And then on the primary product quality, um, this is an area that we have some technology in, um, such as a, a SIFT MS and a range of spectrometers based across our um, AgriEpi estate in, in the UK. Um, but this is an area that we will be growing over the next three, three to five years. Um, so that's a, a focus area. But really looking at the key themes, and really it's about how do we make our food production systems here in the UK more productive and carbon neutral, efficient and circular and profitable and resilient by delivering the four pillars that you see above. So I've mentioned, uh, you know, we are the go-to enabler. Um, we really have established a wide network across a range of collaborators, from food and uh, farm suppliers to UK government, to scientists and, and academia, and you've heard from our, um, our partner today, um, Harper. 
um, engineers and technologists, the wider agri-food industry, and it, that's really important to understand the challenges throughout the supply chain, um, what their focus areas are, that we can report that um, and inform tech developers. Also investors. So whilst we work with a range of um, startup businesses, it's how do we support them in terms of investment and how do they present themselves, who do, who do they engage with, et cetera, um, and a range of um, startups and SMEs. And looking at our, our support services, I've already mentioned the, the R&D funding, but once you've won the R&D funding, um, you want to, to crack on and deliver that technology. Um, and for those of you who have accessed um, the funding and the requirements for that uh, funding in terms of project management can be quite draining um, in terms of the, the resource. So we have a, a team of project managers that are able to support projects um, in, in that area and allow you to focus on developing that technology. We also have our international links via our, um, our smart farms, our international smart farms, but also via um, government departments that we engage with, uh, such as DIT, for example. We have a technical team. Uh, mostly, I would say they are from the um, ag and food sectors. So they have a wealth of uh, expertise and knowledge. We also have uh, data and robotic expertise within the company as well. I've mentioned R&D capabilities um, and the KE and dissemination. And I think this, this is really important, very much linking with our farm innovation um, platforms. I've mentioned our um, member network and today we have 192 members with a combined turnover of 520 billion. It's a great network to be involved with. And again, this is both on a national and an international level. And whilst today we're talking about our Midlands hub, as I've mentioned, we do have a, across the UK a range of facilities that focus on aqua. We've got um, our calf um, health, uh, calf research facility up in Dumfries, our crop facility um, in, in Cranfield, uh, and at the Southwest Dairy with our partner at King's Hay, we've got a 180 uh, commercial dairy unit down here as well. The white dots that you see are our satellite farm farmers. Um, again, around about 24. Um, I don't have a lot of detail with me today, but again, if, if you're interested in that, please reach out and I can provide some further information. I've certainly mentioned the UK and international partnerships already. We have a range of international smart farms. We have two in China, one focusing on, on pig production and sensor technology. And the other one has um, been working on crop and robotics. We have one in Paraguay. We have one in New Zealand, um, which is down here. And we're also working on a 5G project with uh, Northern Ireland as well and a, and a pig farm there. You will notice and no doubt recognize the number of our members that we have. We have a range of the smaller um, hardware, software, tech businesses, all the way up to, to fee companies, to, to manufacturers, processors, up to retailers. And we really do um, cover all aspects of that membership, including um, consultancy support companies, um, as well as in investor businesses as well. Again, very much from the small to the large companies that, that we're able to service. And that really does help in terms of our um, developing our ecosystem to support businesses, particularly again, focused on this presentation today on the facilities that we have within the Midlands Hub. At this point, I'm gonna hand over to Les, who's our hub manager who will present the facility that we have at Midlands. So I will stop sharing my video, but I will continue to press the button for you, Les. Uh, thanks very much, Lisa. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name's Les Hudis, and uh, should you 
need to contact me, I will be at the, the Midlands uh, with more details to follow later. As you see from the uh, nice uh, collage of photographs here, this gives you a snippet of what to expect and what we offer within the, the Midlands Hub. Uh, and if you're thinking about why to choose uh, AgriEpi Centre and work with us and, and our colleagues, Agri and Harper Adams, then what I would say is at our core is we really want to make a difference within the ag sector. And more importantly, if, uh, if you have ideas on how to improve and inject uh, new systems, ideas, processes that will make the UK more productive and effective, then we want to help you, enable you to succeed and achieve your goals. Next slide, please. You've heard about our membership, but what does that offer? Um, we we organise events, uh, we have expertise from around the community, and what the key is this, we see the, the agri sector in, in uh, problems are simple. We have farmers challenges within with including um, weather, nutrition, land, uh, and in doing so we need firms that can come along and help solve those issues. We see those being yourself. Often whilst the idea is there they need proof of concept and so doing it comes down to bringing the right faculty on board and helping you get the right challenges and information you require to move forward. Often that needs funding. So whether it's UKRI, Innovate or commercial funding, we can help assist that with a bid writing and even bringing partners together uh, when it comes to angel or seed or equity funding going further forward. So we're the F, we're the final F in the middle with the facilities uh, and helps with the retirement, the resource to facilitate bringing that consortia and collaboration together. And that way we can build a package that helps you grow. Next slide, please. As mentioned before, we're based in the center, uh, I feel in the center of the universe in Edgman Newport, but most interestingly, we're only two hours away from 50% of the population of the UK. Next slide, please. Uh, we're at the heart of British agriculture and engineering, which we which commenced in 1901 with the advent of Harper Adams College. And as you would have seen before, the home of the hands free farm. But a couple of the companies that um, Tricia mentioned at the beginning, uh, Magro, we're now working with on an ultra fine bubble project at our base in Cranfield, which is on the east. Um, Earth Rover are on site building an autonomous platform for uh, broccoli cutting. We've helped match make and network um, muddy machines to work with um, uh, John Chin at his farm in Hereford on an autonomous asparagus cutter. Uh, and, and we've got half a dozen new companies that have started who've registered at the Midlands Hub uh, who then can benefit subject to criteria from the support offered by the Agri Group. Next slide, please. And as you can see from our facilities, both in the workshop, unfortunately, they're not as clean as that nowadays, uh, with tractors bringing in the mud. Um, we're also a great place to meet and have meetings. And only this week, we would have hosted companies like Sainsbury's yesterday, Crop Foresight today, and Call Tourist tomorrow in our meeting rooms. Next slide, please. Now we're going to get back to normal after the 19th of July. I'll be hoping that we'll be able to have more photographs like this where we've hosted people from around the world, from delegations from uh, New Zealand, Japan, Ireland and Australia, and also focus groups around special interest groups for satellites, uh, drones and digital agriculture. 
Uh, one for the future will be drones again and uh, the use of imagery uh, within Agri. Next slide, please. So covering off, you've heard of, of what we offer, but from a space point of view, we've got 10,000 square feet of workshop space, uh, which can be split into individual bays. Uh, and then a whole mixture, depending on whether you're a startup, a small business ready to grow, or a larger business just running, wanting to run a project, then give us a call, let us meet up, understand what your needs are, and build a package to suit you. Next slide, please. And as mentioned before, we've mentioned a triangle. I see it a bit wider because we also work very closely with our local LEP, uh, the Local Enterprise Partnership, who are developing the Nye Park uh, adjacent to us in, in, in Newport. So we help you complete your jigsaw. So whether you're starting up, building your uh, a package on a new idea, product or, or process, then by talking to us, working with Agri, Harper and ourselves, we can help you move into the future. So if you feel we're right for you, please give us a call and we'll help you move forward. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Les. Brilliant. Thank you, everybody. So now we have a little bit of time left for some questions that have come in. So if everyone wants to bring their video back on and we'll just go through these questions. All right then. Okay, so first um, I'm gonna, it's a question for you, Tricia, and it's about, um, on your slide, you mentioned eligibility criteria. So can you tell me what that looks like and who will be eligible? Yeah, so um, basically if you're a small to medium sized company, so um, under 250 employees, um, that your turnover um, is, is not um, particularly large, um, but also for us based in the Shropshire, Telford and Recon area at the moment. So if you were to be based at the Agri Epicentre, which is what Les has mentioned previously, um, and you either are in the Agri-Tech um, or food sector, so you already have a project that you want to position in that, or you're already in there, or if you have a fantastic idea that you'd like to spin into those sectors, then we can help you. Um, we're an ERDF funded project, so that's a European Regional Development Fund, hence the quite specific regional requirements, um, and also the spe sector specific requirements. But we're also really good at sort of talking to companies, and if we can't help you specifically, we will find you someone that can. So it might be that um, the Agri project might not be able to help you specifically, but we might be able to put you in touch with Palmjet and he'll have an expert that's really interested in what you're doing or um, Les and Lisa um, might be able to sort of help you. So um, we've got some quite specific criteria, but um, if we can't help, we'll be your matchmaker into the Agri-Tech um, and the Agri project, Agri Epi project, and Harper, and we'll make sure that you've got some assistance. So, if you don't think you're quite right, give us a shout anyway. We'll help. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, okay, so this is a question for Palmjet actually. So clearly, Palmjet, we've seen a lot of different um, agri tech areas you're working and developing solutions for. But what is the next big area for robotics? And are there any gaps in the market as well that you? looked to technologies to come and you know fill by yourselves uh, next area for robotics um maybe they can think for themselves i guess you know at the moment they only take commands from us well there could be a a point and it's many years ahead actually where they'll be able to understand that when they're coming across a, a pylon or a tree that it is a pylon or a tree and they aren't going to move and the robot has to move. And when they come across a, a person, well, maybe they just wait and then let the person move on. But yeah, that, that is the thinking is a, a big piece that's going on at the moment across many of the sectors uh, led by um, the autonomous vehicle sector. Uh, 
in terms of agriculture and farming, I guess electrification, uh, alternative use of energy, is going to be a big area and and that's an area that uh, myself and Tricia in particular has been have been working on to see what forms of energies can be used in a rural environment so you know biomethane and hydrogen fuel cell technology and indeed electric you know whether it's from uh, wind or solar power so looking at smaller machines looking at electric machines uh, so electrification is a big area and then indeed uh, the one thing that we're probably all hearing about and there was a recent announcement by uh, Nissan and there's a new uh, center of excellence set up in Coventry is going to be battery technologies how are we going to store that energy and make use of it so there's a few areas that are evolving and alongside of that is there's a plethora of other technologies like sensors um, one other area just to sort of expand on this is going to be communications and connectivity. And that's something we're working with the uh, satellite applications catapult to develop a, an agri living lab um, in a rural environment. If we're having machines that can perform operations on their own, we need to ensure that there's constant and continuous communication. Um, so connectivity and communications, whether it's 5G, even 4G, uh, via satellites and space technologies is going to be a big area for us to consider. Okay, thank you. There's lots of areas to consider there. So thank you for that, Harmjit. Um, so we're going to go across to Les now. I anyway, just want to find out a little bit more about um, Midlands Agritech Innovation Hub and what it would look like to actually be based at the Midlands. Well, it depends on what the company is trying to achieve. Um, you know, we offer packages which are, uh, in essence, an allocated desk register office, postal service, bid writing, all the way through to a full office that can accommodate a team up to 10, 12, uh, use of bays. Uh, and then if it's project based, it's use of assets. And the assets don't necessarily just have to be at the Midlands Hub. Uh, we also have them uh, dotted around the country and on farm. So as and when we prove a concept, it wants to be tested in field then we've got access to our 24 satellite farms, uh, as well as potentially uh, uh, those around Harper Adams. So we always sit down, discuss what the end game is with the individual company and work backwards to come up with a plan that suits them. Okay, brilliant. And clearly we can see the Midlands Agritech Innovation Hub on the back of Lisa's screen there as well. So that is um, just, for you know awareness, that's what we're talking about today. Um, we've also had a question come in with um, um, are there any, well, how active are the agri centres in the financial and economic modelling for new ventures? So Lisa, is that one for you to take? Financial modelling in terms of the development of their tech and the adoption is that what they mean? So um, the different areas of research in the agri-tech space and how active agri are the agri agri centers in the area of financial and economic modeling of the new venture, so. The... Not really knowing the specific details, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try and answer it, um, but maybe Trish can come in specifically on, on this area because I'm thinking more of a new concept um, and, and projects. So I think that this is more of Trisha's area, but in terms of the ag tech centers, the support that we do offer um, relates to um, helping with investment and supporting there, which Les has also mentioned. Um, we have a range of companies within our um, membership base in terms of supporting on market exploitation so you've gone through those different stages which Trish can 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 go through in more detail um kind of so you've developed this technology what will that cost and look like who will you engage with what's the market um how how can we support them in terms of our network and our reach so that is what we do in terms of financial modeling um, we don't do that, but maybe this is where Trisha would come in and can support. Yeah, yeah, it is. 
So um, we can do economic modeling. It's something that I've done in my past. So um, building um, multi-scenario economic models without trying to get too complicated. Um, so we could look at sort of um, scenario A. So if you go down this path and you use this technology or scenario B, if you, you do this technical um, technology in this scenario, which is gonna give you the best um, return on investment, um, how is that going to fit within your market sector? We're really lucky at Harper Adams. We've got um, we've got some professors in agricultural economics, um, and we can link into their expertise as well. So if we've got a company that that needs some assistance in that area, and it's sort of beyond my multi scenario economic thing, and we, we need something a little bit bigger, and maybe to link in with some of the existing agricultural economic models, then. Um, uh, actually, in the project, we've got finances to be able to pay for their time to bring them in to help with that sort of modelling. Um, with regards to sort of linking companies to finances, we do a little bit less of that. We'll scope out and we'll go, look, there's pots of money here and there's pots of money there. Have you considered sort of investment in X? Because we've seen some um, some agri-tech companies are doing some really good things on crowdfunding at the moment. Have you considered that? Um, we'll, we'll sort of help pinpoint opportunities on that but we're, we're not um, in a position other than bidding for funding we do a lot of bidding for funding um, so we can help with that but the the financial modeling yeah we can do we can do some of that um, at various different levels actually yeah so we've got it covered then Trish between us I think we have absolutely that's what what I say if, if you're not interacting with us already then We've got a lot of this support, um, a lot of it's free. And if it isn't, we'll actually help you find funding to pay for it. So yeah, get in touch, we're here to help. Brilliant. Thanks all. So we've just run over slightly. So um, just want to finish the session off and just thank everybody for speaking. It's just great to see so much support available for these agri-tech companies, you know, based in the Midlands and from further afield, this is, uh, the support is available. And to you. So I'll send across the recording and the email addresses for the relevant contacts to start these discussions if you so wish to. And we look forward to seeing these um, agri-tech innovations come forward and grow. Thank Great. you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Lillivelle.